Good morning, everyone. I thought I would come on here and uh, give you guys a little update, talk to you for a minute here. No filters, no Instagram, just a uh, good old YouTube video today. <sighs> so what's been going on? Truthfully, I really don't know. I mean, I do know. Uh, let's just start from the beginning of prep. So I started at 16 weeks out. And the first day I started, I did my cardio. I was off to work. And about halfway through my shift, um, I gotta go somewhere else because there's people around here. They don't need to hear this. Anyway, halfway through my shift, I, uh, <laughs> I got sick. I got a cold. And I could feel it coming on. Went home, rested for about four days. Really got a bad the bad one you know the sore throat the headache the achy body the runny nose the cough everything came out of nowhere seems to happen to me once in a while every time i've started a prep the last couple times it did too but is what it is so that was deterring for a start then after that happened then i got better and i was like raring to go i had i did have a cheat meal to start it off because that's just what I do and I was like okay hey, after this tomorrow morning start my husband and I were both on board he decided he was going to join me on this and follow what I was doing as best as he could so he could support me and that's exactly what happened then you know we get through first week that's great we're feeling good our bodies are starting to change not physically but even just uh internally you know we're starting digestive systems back on track skin's clearing up getting better sleep uh, just overall feeling better and second week comes same thing and i'm feeling even better and at this point, I wasn't even keeping track of days because I usually do when I start something, a goal to try and, you know, not try, just to be healthier and, you know, stay away from stupid crap. And uh, it, I was starting to feel even better. And I didn't even know what week it was, or sorry, what day it was on. So here I go, second week. I'm feeling better and better every day. Don't get me wrong. I had my moments once, twice, twice that week where I was wanting to resort back to the old lifestyle. And then that lifestyle changed and it seemed to be getting better. I started to feel better. And honestly, I feel like at uh, the almost, just about 13 days in, I started to feel like this is it. This is for me. This is what I'm gonna do. This is how I'm gonna go. This is gonna be my new lifestyle and fuck everybody else and everybody else's choices and what they want to do. I even had a few people actually get mad at me because I didn't respond back to their messages or I didn't talk to them because I was busy doing me, you know? And I wasn't there drinking it up with them or whatever. Whatever it is that their intentions were. Regardless, I was a little taken back by that, not gonna lie. Uh, hit me in the heart a little bit and then I was like well you know what it is what it is they're not me and I'm not them and I gotta do what I need to do because this is supposed to be for me and it's supposed to change my life it's prep is doing a bodybuilding competition is not just about the competition itself it's about you it's about changing who you are in a sense that you're bettering your life you're doing something with meaning with purpose you know people who don't understand that that's on them right but you can't feel guilty every time somebody doesn't agree or understand where it is that you're coming from so with that said that was a bit of a challenge but I made it through and then then life happened and uh Instead of it being somebody from the outside world that I could control, it was my husband and me. And we had a weak moment. And I'm not placing blame on anyone because at the end of the day, we both, you know, went out and 
bought alcohol and drank and ate junk food. And we resorted back to our life for a day. And then two, you know, and by the second day, you know, we were like halfway through the day, evening, and we're like, this is stupid, what are we doing? So we stopped, which I thought was great because that's self-control in my opinion, and self-control is better than no control, you know? And we went to bed, and the next day I was like ready to do it, and I thought I was anyway, and uh, halfway through I realized that I wasn't, and I was still hanging on. I was still hanging on. And then to boot, I also was in a mad fight with my sister. And that fight was for a month. And that was the longest fight we have ever been in in our entire relationship, in my entire life with my sister. And Jessica, my sister, she is literally almost everything to me. You know, uh, we've been through a lot together, through things that people couldn't even comprehend, honestly. You know, my stepmother, when we were kids, she would force us, because she'd seen how our relationship was in the start, and she would force us to fight each other, physically, until she said stop. That's not even the worst, you know? There were so many things that she did to us as kids, and uh, I think it's re it really affected us, obviously, mental mentally. Affected my sister mentally, affected me. Fucked with our self-esteem. Fucked with our ability to believe in ourselves, to believe that we're capable of things. But you know what? Through all of that shit that she did to us, all those years until I ran away, Honestly, I can't believe that. I can't believe that I got through that and uh, years of counseling and trial and error, foster homes and bad relationships and drugs and copious amounts of alcohol. I'm still here. And I gotta believe that there's a reason why I'm still here. You know, and <laughs> this weekend was just just a blimp of what what was what's happened in the last seven years. My husband, mine, and my husband's relationship. You know, um, our marriage didn't start off the greatest. I know that his dad passing away suddenly of a heart attack, I believe, in his own home two months after we got married. My dad battling cancer, me having conflicting feelings about that the whole entire time he was dying and just having a hard time forgiving him and wishing he would have been the father that he could have been and he wasn't. Protecting us from that evil Satanist of a woman, who, which he didn't. They took his 13 year old daughter, myself, to run away in order for things to change. So, <laughs> you know, life isn't always fair. Life isn't easy, and you don't always get what you want. And I definitely cannot stand when people tell me that it must be nice. It must be nice, yeah. I've worked very hard to get where I am in my life, and I'll be damned if I'll let somebody bring me down. I'll be damned if I'll ever let someone tell me that I'm not worthy or valuable in my life, in myself, because I am. But it would be a lie if I said that I didn't still battle some demons and I didn't battle some emotional insecurities that I have. Of course, I'm human. We all are, you know. But now my husband's not even here right now. We got into the biggest fight I think we've ever gone into. And we've gone into a lot of fights in our, life, in our relationship, but this is the biggest. You know. I really wanted to do things right this time in my prep, and uh, I really felt let down, you know. And I blamed him 
expected him to be stronger than me. Well, the reality of it was is I could have easily said, no, don't drive to the liquor store. Don't cave to that. We are better than this. Let's go home. I could have done that too, you know. Two-way street in every relationship. It really is. It's got to be a... There's got to be give and take. There's got to be a team, you know. And with no team in a marriage, what do you have? You know, what do you have? You just got one person fighting with another person. And it just doesn't ever end. Anyway, I needed to air that out and I needed to talk about that because it was bothering me. And uh, that's what's been going on in my life. And I don't even know. I don't care if, who listens to this. I did this for myself. I did this because I really needed to tell myself. I really needed to, to voice this out loud because I am at a loss right now, honestly. I just made up with my sister yesterday and I had a weight lifted off my shoulders. And immediately after, after that, I got into a fight with my husband because I couldn't let go what happened on the weekend. Because I really, truly wanted to believe that that was the last time for 16 weeks. And this has been going on for a long time with us. It's what we do when we, when we feel good about ourselves, when we feel good about our life, when something we accomplish something, um, <clears throat> or even if we're trying to make up from a fight, we drink. You know, we don't drink every day. No. I mean, during COVID, I would have thought yeah maybe we did a little more than that but aside from that you know weekend drinkers just like our parents just like them in that sense the only difference is we don't have kids <clears throat> thank god <laughs> but fuck me someone would have told me when I was 20 that I was going to be battling this and actually recognizing that this is an issue for us. You know, sometimes, now that I'm getting older, I'm almost 34, I have, I have a lot more control than I ever did before. A lot. But there's still days where I don't, where I black out and I do really horrible things. Not horrible, but just embarrassing things. And my husband gets the brunt of that and it's eating him alive. And he's resentful towards me for it. I know that. And I feel for him. And I wish that that wasn't the case. I truly do. I wish that I could take that all away, what I did to him. All the years of fighting in bars, getting kicked out of bars when I first started dating him. All the times he'd have to basically carry me home, fight with me to get me into bed. Times I embarrassed his family. I'm not proud of that. And I don't want that anymore. I don't, I want no part of it. I was feeling so good these last two weeks, so good. Best I felt in so fucking long. Since I did A8 back in November last year and then COVID hit again because I thought COVID was over and then it hit out of nowhere. Gyms got closed and I just went off the deep end. <laughs> but really, when does it end? Someone's got to end it. And I got to make that choice on my own here right now because he's not here. And, um... <clears throat> Taking some time away from each other, it's probably a good thing, but it's a fucking battle, I'll tell you. I'm waking up with his cat next to me, and he's not there. It's gotta end. Before there's no going back, and we are both drunks like our parents, and we both die by a bottle. And then some people would tell me, oh, 
You only drink once or twice a week. That's not that, nothing. No, it is. It is because so because society has deemed it to be a normal thing. Deemed it to be normal. It's not normal. It's not normal to drink every weekend. It's not normal to drink until you are intoxicated and you can't think clearly. Those things are not fucking normal. They are patterns and they are problems. And yes, yeah, sometimes hereditary, but still a problem that we cho and a choice we made. So, that's all I'm gonna say about that. It's kinda like a journal entry, I guess. <laughs>